Hey all, Cohen here. So, wanted to make a quick video. Um, I've been noticing that there are a lot of guys talking about acne and beard growth and stuff like that. And as you may be able to tell, I've been dealing with a fair bit of acne lately. Um, luckily, this side of my face has decided it's going to be awesome, and this side has decided that it wants to be shitty. So, unfortunately, we can't help how our skin reacts. Um, with being on hormones again, you end up going through a second puberty. Um, when I went through my first puberty, it was... Um, it wasn't really that bad as far as acne went. I never really had issues with acne, so I never really had to worry about it. And now it seems like... I have a little bit more so this second puberty has been lovely it's uh it's not as bad as it could be there are a lot of guys who have acne worse than me so i really shouldn't complain but it is something that's very annoying to me because i happen to be a picker which means that i if i see a pimple i'm gonna pick it i'm gonna pop it i'm gonna get rid of it or try to and then half the time because i have really really small pores it doesn't work out that way and I end up looking like this, and it's not attractive, it's not fun, it doesn't feel good, it sucks. So, um, there's some stuff that I've been doing both with skincare and shaving that I've noticed have helped out quite a bit. So I'll start with acne stuff. Um, I made this myself, but this is pretty much just coconut oil with some salt and some oatmeal and pretty much you just rub it on your face you leave it sit there for about five minutes and then you wipe it all off and um, when you wipe it off if you use one of these I'm sure that you guys have seen this before they're those little makeup remover pads but get the ones that have nothing on them you use this to remove it and necessarily you don't have to wash your face after this I do just because I don't know what's been on my face as well. So you can either wash your face before and then use the scrub, or you can use the scrub and then wash your face after. But if you wash your face before and then use the scrub, then you can actually leave this on and it will moisturize your skin. So that works well. I've also found that I don't have an actual package of it right now. And it's just literally a bar of soap. And it's not an appealing bar of soap, but it's an amazing bar of soap. Um, it's in a container right now because it's very sticky. And it's one that when it gets hot, it gets squishy. So what I found is I bought a soap dish that, to travel with. And I found that if I put it in there, it sticks to the bottom. And then I can actually just rub it on my face or rub a loofah on it and get the soap that way. But um, this is called... African black soap and you can buy this at most African beauty supply stores um, They're three to five dollars. I think depending on where you go They come in a bunch of different types and they are all natural So there's actually nothing in this soap that might be found in other consumer soaps This is all natural products. So that's why it does work very well for your face Sorry, so that's something that you could use um, I use that in the shower like I said about the loofah, um, I rub this on my face usually four, four to five days out of the week. I just wash my face with this, and then two days out of the week, I get a small loofah, and I gently rub that on my face because what that does, that's a tip for the beard right here. What that does is it exfoliates your skin, and while it's exfoliating your skin, it's encouraging the hair to come out more because as your hair grows it obviously comes out but it gets kind of like stuck and then sometimes you get those ingrown hairs and if you're worried about ingrown hairs then exfoliating at least once or twice a week actually is pretty good for your face it'll get rid of any acne it will also encourage beard growth exfoliating encourages beard growth and for the hair to come out so that's a tip right there um, after I wash my face with that soap and get out of the shower, what I then use on my face is witch hazel. So this is what it looks like. 
comes in a pretty decent sized bottle. It's almost the size of my head. So um, this costs about five dollars, I believe, five to six dollars at Walmart. You can get that. This one is the hundred percent natural one, so it's specifically for cleaning your face. This one's a gentle one for sensitive skin because I have sensitive skin. So most of the products that I use are for sensitive skin. So if there is anybody out there who has sensitive skin, um, these products might be perfect for you. What I do with this is I take one of those little makeup cleansing pads and I just squirt a little bit on and then I rub it all over my face, get my neck and everything, and then give a good scrub in my beard to try to get everything out. After that, what I do is I have a couple things. Um, you can use lavender or tea tree oil, but this is a bottle of lavender that I've been using, and I've been using it for about maybe two months now, two, three months now, and I'm only at half a bottle because this one, I'll show you guys, is one that has the roller on it, and that versus the ones where drops come out will save you so much. Like, this little bottle is probably between 15 to $20 because it's all natural. It's lavender oil that is, it works as um, an antiseptic type thing. So even if you have bug bites and stuff, or if you don't like being bit by bugs, this also works to repel bugs. So if you are looking for something, that's an extra little tidbit that if you like to go into the wilderness and you find that you get bit a lot, lavender. It'll stop the bugs from coming after you. Also, just because we're talking about it, Johnson & Johnson's Aloe Baby Lotion also is good for deflecting bugs, especially if you have sensitive skin and you don't like wearing bug spray. Just a handy tip. So that, I just roll onto my face and then I rub it in pretty good. Um, that also helps with anxiety and stress, so that's an added bonus for that as well. You can use tea tree oil, like I said earlier. Um, that is a little bit harsher on your skin and it might burn a little bit because it is more of an antiseptic that can be used for bug bites, minor cuts, things like that. Um, but like I said, it does work, so if you have a face that's pretty oily or pretty broken out, then tea tree oil might work a little bit better. Um, what I've also bought in recently, which I've found within the last week or so of using it, is actually pretty good. I don't know 100% um, as far as beard growth goes if this is something that actually works or if it's just because I'm massaging my face and it's encouraging the hair to come out. But I have gone online and bought beard growth conditioner, which at the first point it was just conditioner that I saw, so I didn't even know it was for beard growth, I just thought it was to condition my beard, so I bought it, and this is a rosemary lavender, it does smell a little bit weird when you're putting it on, um, it comes like this if you buy the paste, and all you have to do is take a little bit in your palm, and you make it into the oil, this has coconut oil, jojoba oil, rosehip, or Jojoba, like I like to bother my girlfriend, my wife, I like to bother my wife, saying it that way. Um, anyways, rosehip oil, beeswax, and essential oils from the lavender and the rosemary. So I've been using this, and this is the exact same one, it's just actually in the oil form. So if anybody is interested, I will put the link in this video, but that's what the container looks like. I use this usually every day after I wash my face I put the lavender on the skin part of my face and the fur part of oh my god my fur part of my face cause clearly I can't talk today it's Sunday excuse me <laughs> but either way I use this and I have noticed that certain areas of my beard have grown in a little bit more where they were a little bit more sparse like underneath my chin here I'm sure you guys can probably see a little bit. I do have a little bit more of a patchy area where the hair is a little bit slower to grow. So that is something that I feel it could be helping with, but at the same time, I also have some other tricks for that. So I'm not going to say 100% if it works, but it has made my beard feel better. It's made my face feel a little bit better as well. So it definitely was something that I would recommend you can do to encourage beard growth, things like that. Um, one thing I will talk about as far as the sensitive skin thing, since we're starting to talk about shaving and grooming, <laughs> like we're 
dogs. <laughs> Anyways, um, I use this. My buddy suggested it. It's Aveeno. It's sensitive skin relief shave gel. So it actually is awesome because it smells like vanilla. It doesn't make your face smell like vanilla afterwards, but while you're shaving, it definitely smells like vanilla. So don't eat it because it looks like whipped cream and smells like vanilla, but don't do that. It's good for your face though. Um, I actually have been using this for about a year now and I have yet to really get razor burn or problems with ingrown skin or any skin irritation after shaving. After shaving, I generally don't have any issues with my face. It's more what goes on throughout my day-to-day -day life that involves my face being a problem. Um, shaving actually is not really a problem when it comes to acne causing things and stuff like that. Um, I've also used this. This is for sensitive skin as well. It's, um, it is for the gentleman who wants to be old school. It's the soap in a dish. So, well, the shaving cream soap in a dish where you would wet the brush Da, 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 on your face, on your face. Sometimes I do this. Uh, most of the time I use the Aveeno because, let's face it, it's just a lot easier than getting this stuff all set up. But when you have the time and you feel like being dapper, this is really fun to do. So, go ahead and do it. Um, when I shave. When I shave, the odd time... I end up using one of these. This is just a regular no-name, I don't even know if it's a Bic. It is a no-name razor with two blades. This makes sure that my face doesn't break out. A lot of people will say, oh, well you want more blades, or this, or that, or the other, or you should spend like $15 on one razor blade. Well no thank you, I'm not going to do that, I'm not loaded. And at the end of the day, to be honest, the more blades that are on a razor, I personally have found only irritate my skin more, and it also tends to peel off extra layers of your skin because there are so many blades and they are so fine. What I have found is that the two blades allows me to shave my face better with less irritation, and I find as well that the chances of cutting myself are a lot less slimmer having only two blades on there. So for me, I don't go by the fancy razors, I don't care if it vibrates. I don't care if it has a beard trimmer on the end of it. I don't care if it has 20 blades on it. Um, if I want that many blades, I'll go to Edward Scissorhands for a trim up. So, um, at the end of the day, I actually enjoy using these little dinky ass razors. Uh, they work fine for me. They don't bother my skin and they are super cheap. So that works out pretty well with the sensitive skin shaving cream, I really have no issues at all, so it works perfect. Another handy dandy thing I bought myself last year, I bought me and my buddy on his one year anniversary, so it was one year on tea, I bought us both matching ones, so the front of it looks like this, and on the inside, as you can see, comes with the blades, a little brush to clean it off, mirror in the back, and this awesome safety razor. I love using this. The only problem is that the blades for these are hard to find and they're kind of expensive. Best part about this is it's super easy to use. You unscrew this bottom part, gently lift out the blade, and all you have to do is drop it back in. Bam. Done. With these, because my facial hair is not overly as prominent because I only actually shave when it starts to come in here and in my cheeks. So at the end of the day, this blade lasts me at least maybe three to four shaves depending on the type of blade that I am using. Um, most of the time though, you'd want to only do maybe two to three shaves with the same blade and then you would throw them out. Obviously, please be very careful when using these because taking the blades in and out is more dangerous than when you are shaving your face. You will see that there are little teeth on there if you can. I don't know if you can. I'm trying to get it for you. But you can kind of see there that there's little teeth 
and that pulls your beard up or the hair that's there and you just go to town. I find that this is an amazing little razor. It gets really close. To be perfectly honest, I've never done straight edge on myself because I'm too scared I'm going to slit my own throat and um, that's not going to happen. I have gone to hairdressers who also recommend that you should probably not be doing that on yourself. If you taught yourself how and you know how to do it and you're a pro and you're not concerned at all, perfect. But straight edge is something that should be taught to you by someone and probably done by somebody a couple times before you try it on yourself. For myself, like I said, I do not use it. I am too scared to. I collect straight edge razors, the vintage ones, um, but at the end of the day, I either use the cheapy or my safety razor. Those are the best ones that I've found recently. This safety razor with the kit and everything um, was about, I want to say like this was 10 to 15 dollars online. Can't remember the store I bought it from right now because it was over a year ago, but it's called the Butterfly. And um, yeah, it was really cheap, but really good. And then I will try to finish up this video super quick with um, what I use to trim my beard and uh, my mustache and stuff. So for Christmas this year, I had gotten this neat little gift from my buddy and his fiance. Um, the one end works. It has a little light on it. And right here, it has your blade. And that allows you to trim your mustache in around those small places that you can't get to. There's also little pieces that come with it that slide over this that allow it to only cut off so much or only a certain space. So that's really cool. And then on this end, when you push this out, there is pretty much like a hair trimmer type thing. And then what happens is when you slide, this is called a switch blade by the way, so I'll just let everybody know that now. If you don't slide it all the way to the end, then it's still, it won't turn on, but you can clip on these little parts, turn it on, and this, if you have a really bushy beard, you can use it like that, and this pretty much thins it out a bit. It takes away some of the volume. I actually use it for my hair because I have very thick hair and it helps in thinning out my hair a little bit. So if anybody's interested in that, it is called a switchblade. I believe it is probably around the $15 mark if I'm not mistaken. So check that out. I've found that it's helpful for cleaning up the areas where this one, it's your regular hair trimmer. It's a Con Air for men. I bought it at Walmart. I believe it was somewhere around the $14.99 uh, dollar mark. It comes with a bunch of smaller attachments that you can clip on, these ones, and it comes with a little brush and the oil for it. As well, it comes with this. So this actually on the side, if you can see it, has numbers, and that will be the um, when you put this on, whichever number you pick, if you want to this is a number one, so that's what I use that for. I use this to trim my hair, and as well, what I do is I put it on usually number four, or when my beard starts getting scraggly, I'll put it on number four or number five, and I'll give it a good go over, and then it trims up all of the hairs that have grown past other ones, ones that have split ends, stragglers, that kind of stuff. So it works really well to be able to clean up your beard. And what I've found with that as well is that when you trim your beard versus shaving, if you continue to shave, 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 you'll notice that the hair will slowly start to grow in thicker. It'll look darker and this, that, and the other. But at the end of the day, shaving in the long run, and if you are actually looking for results, doesn't do much as far as facial hair growth. There are some guys that experiences it. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. I'm just saying that statistically and scientifically, biologically, shaving actually does not make your hair grow. It could help for some. It doesn't for everyone and for most it does not. Um, but trimming actually does. It's the exact same as when you cut your hair. You cut your hair, you get rid of all the dead ends, and then all of a sudden you notice that a good amount of hair has grown back. For me, I noticed that um, with my hair, I have hair 
grow back at about an inch a month, maybe a little bit more for the top of my head. Um, roughly almost the same for my beard. In a month, I can probably get a good inch or so going, but I do trim it up just to encourage it to keep going. I would love to get a really big bushy beard, but I also do enjoy playing with all of my tools that I have just shown you. So most of the time, it doesn't work out to be a big bushy beard, but someday, someday. Um, I hope this was informative for people. I hope that this has helped. If anybody has any questions, I will put the links for some of the stuff that I have shown um, below in the information area. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below or you can send an email if you do not feel like discussing through the comments. Uh, we'll answer any of your questions and we hope that everybody has had a great weekend. Hope that everybody will have an awesome week coming up. Just going to say that on Saturday, Trans Fellas is having their Who's Their Patty fundraiser. There is going to be a drag show. There's going to be live music. Uh, downstairs opens at 10. Upstairs opens at 10.30. It'll be at Steel Lounge. Prizes. Um, merchandise will be sold. Baked goods. Awesome, awesome stuff. So get your butts down there. If you're in the Hamilton, Toronto surrounding area, get your butts down to Steel Lounge on Saturday and come support Trans Fellas as... They do their Who's Your Patty fundraiser. Take care, I'll talk to you soon. Peace.